Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another card video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today I'm going to be creating a card using these two products from Waffle Flower. One is the popping in stamp set and then the coordinating dies. The technique I'm going to be focusing on today is actually from an older card video of mine. I asked you guys on Facebook what card you would like me to revisit, and this is one of the cards um, that many of you suggested. So I'll have it linked up in the top corner. In that original card video, I showed how to do some ink smushing onto watercolor paper. So I'm going to do the same technique in today's card video. Starting out with some Evergreen Bow Distress Ink that I've made a little bit more liquid with a wet paintbrush. I picked that up with a piece of acetate and then transferred that to my watercolor paper. Now it wasn't quite enough liquid or quite enough wet ink for my purposes here, so I decided to turn that acetate over and apply it directly onto the acetate. Then I sprayed it with a Distress Sprayer, just some water, turned it over and then I was able to have quite a bit more ink to work with. And this was a little bit easier to get the kind of large open area that I wanted. So just for reference so that you're aware, I'm using some Strathmore cold press watercolor paper. It is cut to five by seven. And I moved on to using antique linen and Victorian velvet. Those two colors are beautiful next to each other. I then brought in some pumice stone and then also a little bit of tattered rose. And if you want the colors to kind of mix and blend in with each other, go ahead and add them in when both are still wet. But if you want to have a little bit more definition like I had with pumice stone or things like that, you can definitely dry the layers in between. I also ended up uh, sprinkling on some clean clear water at the end of that process and then picking it up with a paper towel and that uh, pulled up a little bit of the color. So as far as the images from the stamp set I'm going to be doing some no line coloring. So I've stamped all of the images, just the two images, from the stamp set in antique linen distress ink and now I'm going to be using some of those same colors that I use on the background to paint my picture. So I'm starting out with antique linen and I'm getting down a nice color on the drawers. And the thing that I wanted to do with this, I wanted to make sure that the bottom and right side of each of the drawers was darker than the other sides. And this is going to give it more of a three dimensional look because if the light was coming from the upper left, that lower right would be darker on those drawers. So that's what I'm doing here and while I'm adding a bunch of color. So I'm going to take some of that Victorian velvet and I'm going to use that to paint the little bunny that's popping out of the drawer. And the one thing you have to remember with no line coloring, especially on very small images like this, is you want to make sure that all of your edges are clearly defined. Um, most of the time I like to use a hot press watercolor paper for for this in particular because cold pressed papers tend to have more texture and then it's harder to get a nice clean line. But this Strathmore watercolor paper happens to have, it's kind of in between. It's not as textured as say an Arches cold press, but it's also not super smooth either. I find I have really good results with it. So I used some pumice stone on the bear and it had it a little bit of that Victorian velvet on the bear's cheeks. And then I use some pumice stone to darken their faces and kind of draw in the details on each of the animals. So I'm taking that scarf and I'm making it an evergreen bow color. And then I'm going to start doing some more shading on the drawers. I'm bringing in an, some darker color on those sides that I was talking about earlier. And this time I mixed a bit of the antique linen with pumice stone in order to intensify and darken that color and still have it be relatable to the rest of the color on the images. So I'm adding more of that dark edges in and then I'll eventually paint the drawer pulls with a little pink, a little bit of that Victorian velvet. And I'm also going to add a little bit more shading on a couple sides of the drawers. And then I'm going to add a little bit of an angle um, of shading on the front of the drawers because I thought that kind of really um, lend, 
lent itself the look of more shadow coming into the room or possibly into the room. Added some more shading around the drawers. And then I'm just about done here. I'm just going to add a little more water and then add the little nail hooks or however these drawers are put together, just a little detail. And they started to kind of blend in because some of the areas were wet. So I hurry and sped up the drying process with my heat tool and then dropped in those nail heads. And that finishes all of the painting. So then I took the coordinating dies and I used some blue painter's tape to hold the dies in place. And I always like to place the tape on the outside of the image. So it's just touching the die and then touching the outer paper. This is because if you have it overlapping the paper and it goes through your die cutting machine, it can perhaps press that tape into the image and then it's very difficult to remove without tearing your colored image. So my drawers are going to look like that. And now I'm going to use that same watercolor paper. I'm just going to use the corner of it. And I prepped it with the powder tool. And I'm stamping the popping in to say hi message from that stamp set. I'm going to stamp it in Versamark. And then I'll coat it with some Hero Arts white embossing powder. And then I will heat set that until it's smooth and melted. The idea behind this is I wanted to have the greeting in all white and have some more of that color that I've painted with going over the top and have that greeting resist the paint. So now I've got some more of that pumice stone using a paintbrush to bring over that color. And it looks pretty good, but I did want it to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to heat set that just so it speeds up the drying process and then come in with even more color and make sure that I'm really accentuating those words. I want it to be very obvious what it says. I then drew a really simple kind of talking bubble shape and used my scissors to trim that out. So I placed it over, I like put everything together, trying to envision how it would all look because I wanted to make sure that that greeting had enough contrast um, between the background and the piece uh, that said popping in to say hi. And as you can see here, it, it's okay, but it sort of gets lost. So I thought it would be beneficial to darken up that area once more. And then I actually decided that I would add some shading underneath the drawers as well. So I moved that die cut up because I haven't adhered it yet. Added a little bit of shadow using that pumice stone with my paintbrush. And then I also traced the talk bubble using a pencil and then used my scissors to cut out a shape to go underneath it. And I just left a little border or a little margin around that pencil shape that I drew. And this is going to allow me to have another piece of white that goes underneath that talk bubble. So I'm adding some foam adhesive to all my pieces. And I'll press that down onto the card front. Um, I did trim down the watercolor paper to be four and a quarter by five and a half. So it's the perfect size for a card front. And then I adhered all of my pieces. And I'm gonna have this one cover those two uh, drawers on the top. And that's going to allow the little animals to pop up above the drawers. So to finish off the card, I'm just going to create the card base. This is made out of some Nina Solar White cardstock in the 110 pound version. And I scored that at five and a half to create a top folding card. I added some Tombow Extreme Adhesive, and then I'm going to adhere the watercolor piece onto the card front, uh, starting from the top left corner. I like to start in that order. Press that down. And that is my finished card for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of walk down memory lane with a technique that I've shown before. It was a lot of fun to create. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in my next video.